Okay, this chapter we're going to introduce, just kind of touch on a lot of different things that use our trig skills. For this section, we are introducing vectors. So a vector is a value with both magnitude and direction. It's a direct line segment with an initial and a terminal point. So having magnitude and direction is going to be big. That's going to be how we kind of define our vectors. Magnitude, we're going to do Pythagorean theorem a lot to find the magnitude. So it's going to come across as a length, right? Because we can make a right triangle out of these vectors and then find the length of it. But it kind of tells you the force behind the vector. And then the direction, we're going to go back to the unit circle and we're going to find theta to help us figure out the direction that it's going. So to find the length of a vector or the magnitude, length is magnitude in vectors, it's going to be these double bars, right? Double bar, oops, pencil, double bar, P, Q. And you draw this like half arrow over it when it's a vector or see this V down here, bold is another way to name a vector. So double bar of a vector means you're finding the magnitude or the length of it, and you're gonna use the distance formula, which is just Pythagorean theorem. So in this example done down there, the magnitude of PQ would be root 29. Vector V is actually the set of all directed line segments that have the same magnitude and the same slope. So when you see, these aren't gonna be accurate. Well, I guess I can try to make them to scale. When you see an arrow like that, going in the same magnitude and the same direction, let me put some axes here, right? Maybe that one started at zero, zero. Well, maybe there's one that starts here and it's the same slope, same direction and the same magnitude. This one here, same direction, same magnitude. These could all be called vector V, even though they're in different locations on my plane, coordinate plane. Vector V is a set of all directed line segments that have the same magnitude and the same slope or direction. Okay, so let's start finding things. So to show that u equals v, vector u equals vector v, we want to show that they have the same magnitude and the same direction. So let's set up some axes and figure out what we have going on. So vector u is from p equals 0, 0 to 5, 8. So I am not doing this to scale, but I'm going to label this 5, 8. So you can set up Pythagorean theorem. I guess I'll use purple. Set up your Pythagorean theorem. 90, this is five, this is eight. And find the magnitude of vector u. So u with the half arrow, the double lines is magnitude. Take a second and do that. While I set up the other one. starts at 311 I don't know maybe right here I'm not doing this to scale but I'll call it 311 and it goes to 819 you can again set up Pythagorean theorem from 3 over to 8 this distance would be 5 and from 11 up to 819 this distance would be 8 so you can see right away your magnitude is going to be the same this is vector V show an equation finding its magnitude as well. Well then, because they make the same triangle, if I put a little red theta inside each one, theta is going to be, well, let me do it this way. We have the 8 and the 5, right? So tangent theta is going to equal 8 over 5. So theta is going to equal inverse tangent of 8 over 5. And it happens on this one as well. I'm going to skip down to theta equals inverse tangent of 8 over 5. We would need a calculator for this. Make sure you're in degree mode. I get 57.9946, so I should make that a five degrees. And since it's the same equation for both of them, it is the same for both of them. So these two vectors are the same. Their magnitude and their direction are the same. So they are technically the same vector. They are equal. Vector U is equal to vector V. Okay, standard position. So, up above, vector u was actually in standard position because its initial point was at the origin, 0, 0. We can take any vector and move it to standard position, which would be component form. 
If you see a vector with these pointy brackets, I honestly don't know what those are called, then you know it's in what's called component form, which means it starts at 0, 0, and then it goes to the given point. So number two, given vector is at 6, negative 5. So component form is telling me that it ends somewhere over here, right? It's not to scale, but it's definitely in the right quadrant. From 0, 0, it goes, try to make it straight, and it points to 6, negative 5. So we need to find magnitude, double bars, magnitude, and direction. So right triangle, it went over six and down five. Magnitude of vector v is gonna be the square root of six squared plus five squared, right? I don't need to show that, right? Six squared plus five squared, 36 plus 25, which is 61. Magnitude is root 61. The direction theta, if you do tangent theta, right, because I have opposite negative 5, adjacent is 6, so that's tangent, theta is going to be tan inverse of negative 5 over 6. Go ahead and type that into a calculator and see what you get. So did you get tan or theta equals negative 39.806 degrees? Because that's what the calculator tells you, right? That's because inverse tangent or arc tangent has a restricted range, right? We can only have one output, even though there's two places on the circle that would give us that same tangent value. Also, we want it usually to be between 0 and 360. So they gave me this. They gave me negative 39 degrees. That's this angle right here. And that's what I was looking for. That's fine. But we often like to have it in the counterclockwise direction, right? Just like the unit circle goes. So use your unit circle skills. It's in degrees. If it's negative 39.806 degrees that way, how many degrees is it in orange? How could I represent theta between 0 and 360? Well, coterminal angles, right? So 360, just add 360 to it. Add a whole circle to get that positive coterminal angle. When I add 360, I get 320.194 degrees, which makes sense because it landed in quadrant four. So our magnitude was up here, and our direction in degrees is right there. Okay, given the vector v, again, component form. So we know it has been, it is initial point is at zero, zero. Sorry, I missed the point at the top. We need to highlight this. A unit vector is a vector to vector with magnitude of 1. So that's going to be important. But why don't you start this one? See if you can find the magnitude of vector v. So if you'd like, set up some axes. It's always helpful later when we're going to find the direction if you have your axes drawn and you put things in the correct quadrants. So negative 8, 3. Approximately, right? That's the point negative 8, 3 that it's going to. Make a right triangle out of it. 8 to the left, 3 up. Magnitude of V, Pythagorean theorem. Remember when you square things, they're positive. Square root of 73 is what the magnitude of this current vector is. Now they would like us to find a unit vector with the same direction. So first of all, notice they're changing the name. This will not be the same vector. This will be a different vector, u, with the same direction. So we know where it starts. It starts at 0, 0. And our vector went to negative 8, 3. And it had a magnitude of root 73, a length of root 73. Well, if I want it to go somewhere and have a magnitude of 1, I just need to take the original vector in component form and divide it by root 73. So there's a page about the rules for this. You just distribute that. So make sure it's a sharp pointy bracket. Negative 8 over root 73, comma, 3 over root 73. And if you took the time and did Pythagorean theorem with that, you would get a vector in the same direction, the same theta, that has a magnitude of 1 because those root 73s end up canceling each other out in the end. Feel free to do the math on your own. Um, if we want a vector with magnitude that doesn't equal 1, so down here, 
use the direction vector and multiply or divide by the desired magnet magnitude. So they want us to continue number three, find a vector in the same direction of V that is 10 units long. So remember, U is one unit long. It's a unit vector. So if I want, they didn't give me a name, I'm gonna call it vector W, to have 10 as its magnitude, I need to multiply my answer by 10. Negative 80 over root 73, 30 over root 73. If you take a magnitude, a vector of magnitude one, and multiply it by 10, now it's gonna have a magnitude of 10. Okay, here's that page with all those operations I was talking about. It's real pretty basic and simple. I think if you were guessing, you could figure this out. You take the x's if you wanna add vectors, add the x's, add the y's. If you wanna subtract vectors, subtract the x's, subtract the y's. If you wanna multiply by a constant, just go ahead and distribute that constant. Another way to write vectors from component form is in linear combination as as a linear combination. So here's the example. So it's just something, another notation you might wanna know. They put an I on the X value and a J on the Y value. Um, if it's minus, they minus. If it's plus, they keep it positive. So let's just use the math and let's do number four. So we've got two vectors in component form by negative U. Take a second and pause this video. I'm just gonna do all these. Just carefully do the math. Okay, check yours with mine. I didn't show any work for A, I just multiplied by a negative. B, I multiplied each vector by its coefficient, and then I did plus because I multiplied by negative seven right there. That's why I put plus in the middle. However you did it, you should get the same answer as me. C, I did the inside of the parentheses, right? U plus four V first, and then I distributed by three at the end. Let's also write vector u in linear combination form. So remember vector u is just pointy bracket, three negative five. So using this linear combination up here, that would just be vector, what was it, u equals three i minus five j. So if that comes up, I need you guys to know what it means, right? And it's not complicated. Just be able to recognize it. Here is a picture trying to explain how we add vectors visually. So if you have vector u and you want to add vector v, you take u first and then you put the end of v the initial at the terminal of u, and when you add those together, this new vector from the beginning of u to the terminal of v, that is the resulting vector u plus v. Okay, component form. How do we move things to make them component form? Because component form is much more helpful. You know it starts at zero, zero, and you can easily find everything else you need to find. So if you are a person who loves formulas, we've got the initial point, right? The first point, and then we've got the terminal point. Mathematically, you're gonna take each terminal, so the terminal X and the terminal Y, and you're gonna subtract the initial X and the initial Y, and that'll be how you get, so it even says it down here, terminal, minus initial, but this on mine, the minus initial is way over here for some reason. So let's just jump right into number five. I'm also gonna try to explain why, where that formula comes from because it's really not that complicated. So let's say we've got a set of axes, not to scale because it's kind of big, but we can make do. So u is the vector from negative five, nine, approximately here, to four, negative one, approximately here and the terminal is where the arrow goes, right? Well, I want to move this vector so that it starts at zero, zero. I wanna move the starting point, right? So what do I need to do? Let me label my vector. This was negative five, nine, and this was four, negative one. If you're not gonna use tick marks, always label what you're doing. So I need to move this point, that direction, how many? Well, I need to add five, right? I need to move it five to the right. 
Well, if I do that to this point, I need to do that to my end point as well. So I'm gonna add five there, that's gonna give me nine, and I'm going to component form. I need to move that same point down, in this case, how many? Well, nine, right? These numbers are coming right here. Opposite of that is plus five, opposite of that is minus nine. Well, if I'm gonna minus nine from the initial, I need to minus nine from the terminal, I get nine, negative 10 in component form. And what you just did, I'm crossing it out with my box though, sorry was the formula up there. We took the terminal point, four, and we minus, which made it opposite, the initial point, so it made it plus five. Terminal point, negative one, minus initial point, nine, and it gave us our component form. Okay, what's next? Okay, see if you can do this one. So you were given Component form, so you know it's starting at zero, zero. Find a unit vector. So you need to start by finding the magnitude and then divide that out. See how far you can get on this. Draw a little picture as well. Okay, so I set up a picture and I found the magnitude. So Pythagorean theorem gives me a magnitude of 10. So they want a unit vector, so it's different, right? It's not gonna be the same. It's only the exact same vector if it has the same magnitude. But they want a new vector, u, in the same direction, but with a magnitude of one. Well, if this one has a magnitude of 10, I need to divide out, it was eight, that magnitude from both the X and the Y. And this would be a good one to go ahead and do Pythagorean theorem if you don't believe me, that if you do Pythagorean theorem, I'm just reducing that, with these fractions, it will have a magnitude of one. So it will give you a tiny vector exactly on the same line, so with the exact same theta, but it would only have a length of one. So now if they want you to take that one and find another one w with the uh, magnitude of five, a five unit vector, then you're just going to take your answer and multiply by five. I'm not done, this is just how I'm writing it, and they called it w. So distribute the five, and w, vector w, is going to be 4, comma, negative 3. And you should know your Pythagorean triples well enough to know if you do Pythagorean theorem with those numbers, you will get a magnitude of 5. So it's going to come down here and go approximately halfway, right? All with the same theta, all with the same direction. Okay, this is just another basic math problem in... Um, linear combination form. Why don't you go ahead and try this one and I'm just going to post the solution. It's not very pretty, but if you do the math and you take a third of w, sorry, of u, and subtract five v's, you're going to have to make some common denominators around along the way, but this is what you should get. Okay, moving on. We need to talk more about that theta, right? Because depending on what quadrant you're in, it might take a few more steps to find theta. So here's the picture, right? And remember that if you were looking for theta and you have x and y, tangent theta is always gonna be your y over your x. So to get theta, you're always gonna do inverse tan or arc tan if you prefer, y over x. But depending on which quadrant you're in, that might not be the final answer. So we're thinking of the unit circle when we do these. Might not be your final answer when you're done because arc tangent only gives you one answer and there's always two for every angle, right? So let's do number eight. Find the directional angle of 711. So start with some axes, not to scale. 711 is going to be pretty tall. This is supposed to be the point 711. We are finding theta. So right triangle connected to the x-axis. This is 7, this is 11. Tangent of theta is going to be 11 over 7, opposite over adjacent. So tan inverse of 11 over 7. This is not a special one, right? This is not on the unit circle, so you'll need a calculator. Second tan, 11 divided by 7. 57-ish theta is approximately 57.529 degrees. Looking at my picture, that makes sense. Positive 57, it's still in quadrant 1. That is my direction 
for this vector. Okay, last one. Number nine, set it up. Negative eight, negative 16. Approximately here, it's supposed to be negative eight, negative 16. Right triangle, negative eight, negative 16. Now, when you connect this and you find theta, that is just inside your triangle. Last time inside my triangle was also from the beginning of a unit circle, right? The circle starts there and goes counterclockwise. This time I'm only gonna find that angle and it is what I need to do first, but it won't be the final answer. So tangent theta is equal to O over H. So theta is gonna be tan inverse of two, right, 16 over eight. Tan inverse of two gives me 63.435 degrees. So hopefully you can see that it is not, we always want from the beginning of the unit circle, right? We always want this. Clearly that orange arc is not 63 degrees. But now that we know the green arc is 63, what will you do to find the orange arc, the direction angle? So this much of my arc is 180, right? And then I have 63 more, just add 180, and you should get 243.435 degrees. So notice in, in any quadrant other than quadrant one, theta is not your final answer. So depending on which quadrant you're in, you'll have to do something different. Just look at your picture to help you figure it out. Okay, this is the end of today's video. I hope you guys are doing good.